about the last person with her. Uh, this is all I can say. I'm sorry, but I just hope that they find her as soon as possible, and I'm praying for her and her family. Hey, you, and welcome. My name is Mike. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the more baffling disappearances in recent times. Where did Lauren Spear go? Lauren Spear was a 20-year-old student at Indiana University, who mysteriously vanished after a night out on June 3rd, 2011. After nationwide coverage and a still ongoing investigation, what happened to Lauren the night she disappeared remains unknown. Lauren grew up in Scarsdale, New York. She began attending Indiana University in 2009, studying textiles merchandising. Aye, aye, aye. She was a bubbly and outgoing college student, which added to the danger of her using drugs. So let's get into the background of the night she disappeared. At the time, she was dating a young man by the name of Jesse Wolf, and other friends who were out that night include Jay Rosenbaum, David Rohn, and new acquaintance Corey Rossman. The night started out with Lauren, David Rohn, and Corey Rossman pre-gaming in Corey's apartment, before they went out to the nearby Kilroy's sports bar, about 2 a.m. They were only there about 30 minutes, but she left her shoes and cell phone at the bar. Presumably, she was well out of it at this stage. Notably, her boyfriend, Jesse Wolf, he was not out with her that night. She was just out with her other guy friends. At 2.30 a.m., Lauren and Corey left Kilroy's and walked back to her small apartment. She was seen by neighbors stumbling and looking completely out of it. The neighbors didn't like the way Corey was handling Lauren and asked if she was alright. Supposedly, then Corey made some kind of smart remark and the neighbors punched him in the face. We gotta remember, they were all fairly hammered at this point. Corey especially because he just got hammered in the face. Lauren and Corey then made a quick getaway from the apartment complex. Now, about 3am in the morning, they entered an alleyway to head back towards his apartment a few blocks away. She was barefoot and fell a few times, stumbling around. Her keys and purse were later found in this alleyway. They end up back at Corey Rossman's apartment. Michael Beth, Corey's roommate, then saw them. Corey was absolutely hammered at this point, puking all over the carpet and such. Rossman then went to bed and passed out. Michael tried to persuade Lauren to stay over, just to sleep it off, but she was determined to go home. So then, Michael Beth takes Lauren to his neighbor's place, Jay Rosenbaum. According to him, he tries to get her to sleep at his house, wait till she's sober, and then head back to her own place. But she was having absolutely none of it. Two calls were placed from Jay's phone, and Jay says Lauren made those calls. One to her friend David Roan, who had been out with her earlier that night, and the other to a different male friend, identity unknown. Neither person answered their phone, and no messages were left. Jay Rosenbaum reported that Lauren Spear left the apartment at 4.30 a.m. And this was the last reported sighting of her. After a heavy night of drinking, partying in this college town, she left friend's apartment at 4.30 a.m., walking home alone, and she was never seen again. He said he saw Lauren at the intersection of 11th Street and College Avenue, headed south on college. She was last seen barefoot, wearing black leggings and a white t-shirt. Several hours later, that morning, her boyfriend Jesse Wolf sends Lauren a text message. He receives a reply from an employee at the bar where she had left her phone. Jesse and Lauren's roommate then check Lauren's apartment. No sign of her. Jesse then went to police and reported she was missing. Her parents arrived the next day and the search began with nationwide coverage. Hundreds of volunteers took part in the search for Lauren. A $100,000 reward was offered for information leading to Lauren's safe return. And as you can imagine, the search they found diddly squat. 
Two months after she disappeared, police conducted a nine-day search of a nearby landfill for clues in the disappearance. The Bloomington Police Department, the Indiana University Police Department, and the FBI took part in the search, but they came up with nothing related to her disappearance. The latest images come from a security camera, according to the authorities. Here's one of them, which police say shows Lauren just hours before she disappeared. Now, that night, security footage showed someone in a white pickup truck circling the block near where Lauren was last seen. Late at night in a university town known for partying with a lot of drunk women around, it's kind of a predator's hunting ground. The driver was identified as James McClish, a convicted felon just released from prison at the time of her disappearance. He had just been paroled for assaulting his ex-wife and was living in a halfway house about 10 minutes from where she was last seen. An acquaintance of his reached out to investigators, alleging he killed Lauren. Police had dismissed these claims early on, but private investigators requested him to perform a polygraph, which he agreed to, saying he wanted to clear his name, or he was looking for attention, which is common with um, psychopaths. This was performed on 2020. Regarding the disappearance of Lauren Spear, do you intend to answer all the questions truthfully? Yes. Do you remember wanting to see someone get hurt? Yes. Do you remember thinking of killing someone and not do it? Yes. Do you know where Lauren Spear is? No. Did you conspire with anyone in the disappearance of Lauren Spear? No. And nothing at all was found. He was innocent. I mean, the polygraph found him innocent. There were other leads, of course, other people of interest, but they went nowhere. Due to the state she was in the night she disappeared, police almost immediately suspected foul play. However, Jesse Wolf, Corey Rossman, and Jay Rosenbaum all hired attorneys right away. Jesse Wolf helped with the search for the first two days before his parents came and took him away. Now, he was Lauren's boyfriend, so searching for just two days and then being taken away by her parents... I mean, is it just me? That doesn't look good, but who knows. No one had seen Jesse out that night. He said he was at home watching the NBA Finals. He denies any involvement, and Lauren's friends say he was not someone who would hurt her. Corey Rossman held the most suspicion, as he was with her most of the night and refused to talk to Lauren's parents or the investigators. I was not the last person with her. This is all I can say, I'm sorry, but I just hope that they find her as soon as possible and I'm praying for her and her family. And Ross from ABC News 2020, can we talk to you for just a second about Lauren Spear? Rossman has denied any involvement in Lauren's disappearance, but declined repeated requests to talk with 2020. Why wouldn't you talk with uh, Lauren's parents? They just want to ask you some questions about what happened that night. Anything you can say at all? property of BC. He claims he does not remember anything after being punched near Lauren's apartment that night. Regarding her friends having something to do with it, there was some form of foul play by those she knew. Corey especially, as he was with her most of the night? I don't think so. Corey was last seen being so drunk he vomited all over the place and passed out. And she was seen after he passed out. The last person she was seen with, Jay? I don't think so. I mean, he clearly should not have let her walk home alone, especially, you know, the state she was in. But, I mean, her apartment wasn't too far away. I mean, and this is a party town, so presumably, you know, this kind of thing would happen all the time. He just assumed, like any other night, she'd be fine walking the couple of blocks to her place. Doesn't make it right, but, I mean, these things happen. I mean, the only other options are, they killed her, but... Where in Jay's apartment? I don't know. Just doesn't seem that likely that they would have done something. Did heavy drinking and the drugs she was on lead to her death? I mean, she had a heart condition. She wasn't supposed to be doing those things. She had a weak heart. She also fell multiple times that night, so she could have seriously banged her head. Maybe she went into cardiac arrest and the others panicked. 
But if she died accidentally, why would you not call 911? Rather than, if this is a theory, but just getting rid of her body, why would you not call an ambulance and try and save her life? That theory I'm not too sure on either. Another possible lead came from a man named Corey Hammersley. Hammersley was once a star student and athlete, and got deep into the drug scene at Indiana University. One year after Lauren's disappearance, Hammersley had a meltdown while high on drugs. He also opened fire on police, which earned him 24 years in prison. We begin tonight with new details in the police shooting of a naked man in Bloomington. Authorities say they were forced to shoot the man twice after he pointed a gun at officers. It happened just before 7 this morning on East 15th Street near the Indiana University campus just a few blocks away from Memorial Stadium. The suspect is now identified as Corey Hammersley. He's 21 years old. He only wore sandals and a baseball cap. He was yelling incoherently. It all went down at 6.53 this morning. While behind bars, another inmate alleged he was playing cards with Hammersley when Lauren's photo came up on the television. Immediately, Corey looks up at the TV and says, and says, man, I knew the guys that did that. The inmate who served time with Hammersley agreed to recount what he says Hammersley told him if we blacked out his face. And they were drinking and got to doing ecstasy, and she OD'd. It scared them. They didn't know what to do with her, and they took her down to the Ohio River and got rid of her, and then he said disposed of her body. However, police didn't believe this to be credible and didn't follow it any further. When others... Moved her body. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. I've never met this person before in my life. Lauren's parents believe that the men she was with know more than they're letting on. And that seems confirmed by their refusal to take polygraphs and then hiring attorneys. However, the men responded that they had taken privately administered polygraphs, as well as one from the FBI. Since they do not trust the Bloomington police, they say, they have retained lawyers. Lauren's parents even filed a lawsuit against Corey Rossman, Jay Rosenbaum, and Michael Beth, accusing the men of negligence, alleging that Corey Rossman and Jay Rosenbaum supplied Spear with alcohol after she was already visibly intoxicated, and then neglected to assure she returned safely to her apartment, which likely led to her death. The lawsuit for negligence, it was thrown out. The judge, he dismissed it, stating, Unfortunately, there could be any number of theories as to what happened to Lauren and what, if any, injuries she may have sustained. Without evidence to prove these theories, it would be impossible for a jury to determine if whatever happened to Spear was a natural and probable consequence of her intoxication without any other intervening acts that would break the causal chain. One thing is strange to me though. Why did no one call Jesse Wolf Lauren's boyfriend after seeing the absolute state she was in? I mean, that would be the first thing I would think of is call her other half, call her partner who can take care of her. Most likely, she was probably abducted by a stranger which is what happened four years later in the very same place. Hannah Wilson went missing on April 24th, 2015, after visiting the same bar that Spear was at the night she disappeared. Wilson was last seen getting into a taxi in front of Kilroy's and driving away. Her body was found the next morning in Brown County, Indiana. A local man named Daniel Messel was arrested for the murder after his cell phone was discovered near the body. However, investigators, they don't believe the two cases were linked. They don't think Daniel had anything to do with Lauren's disappearance. And so they still have no leads as to what happened to her or where she went. It's been eight years since she went missing. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video real soon as always, guys. Thanks again. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.